G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. Welcome to 2024, my name is James. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today, I hope you are ready to get very up close and personal with about 35,000 journals. I've pulled them all out and I'm going to show you everything I think you may end up seeing throughout 2024 here over in my corner of the earth. Now, I don't know if you will see all of this, uh, everything is flexible ever since I made that 2020 vision video and then 2020 happened. I've learned to be the most flexible and open-minded person on the planet. Uh, probably not, but you know what I'm talking about. I, I can't commit to anything uh, and I don't want to either and I don't think you actually have to. So this is all just options and I'm going to run through all of the journals that are close to my desk or at hand or live on my desk or I take with me on the daily. Uh, anything I think you might run into this year just because I think when you see it online sometimes it's hard to know where that is or where it's coming from or even what size it is and sometimes I just think it's better to get all of this out in one video just so you can see it all so this isn't essentially my strict 2024 lineup video even that's probably what I'm going to call it uh, this is all the journals you might see this year so let's start with uh, in no particular order honestly my daily planner because this one is its own thing. I used the Hobonichi Weeks Planner for 2023. I used uh, the 101 Dalmatians cover. I have another one of these. I don't know where the other 2022 one is. Either way, you don't need to see them, but um, just so you know, I love these because I love the weekly and the monthly spread. I also track in the yearly. I use these health effort stars in air quotes. <laughs> There's stars that I get for making certain efforts towards living a healthier lifestyle. It's not that strict, but wherever you see green, that's where I went to a Zumba class. Very heavy on the Zumba, uh, early 2023. Dancing is red, which the more red you see in here, the better for me, honestly. So the blue is walking. Yes, walking. I think it was 30 minutes to 40 minutes at least, but I don't think I ever really walked for 30 minutes. So it's at least a 40 minute walk around the neighborhood. I got a blue star and it was an intentional walk too. It wasn't like, oh, I just ended up walking from a point A to point B and it took 40 minutes. It had to be like, I set out to do the walk. And then weights are pink. What a joke that is. Um, I, did, <laughs> I had a bit of a shoulder issue, so I was trying to work out uh, and balance that out. That worked, so I guess I gave up after that. And the pink, it just, there's literally two. It was an intentional, like, workout with the weights. There are other times I'll just pick them up and play with them, uh, just to, you know, do a minute or two, but these were, like, actual workouts. So, I mean, I am slack, but that's why there's only two. <laughs> and I literally, I would Google, uh, <laughs> I think it was, like, seated, um, like, a hand weight workouts for senior citizens, I think is what I googled. My shoulder's really sore at that point. I really didn't want to push it. Anyway, these are the monthly spreads. I do decorate them a little bit. Nothing particular, no specific themes or anything too fancy. Uh, I just put my stickers and most of my collage club stuff lives in here. And yeah, I love it. The more red stars you see, the better, honestly. If you ever find me in a happier mood, Come look at my planner, see how many red stars there is. I love dancing. In 2023, I went right back to it. So that was great, and I do need the planner for that. This is my actual daily planner. It's, it's not usually so naked. I have this Galen leather crazy horse uh, cover that has this personalized embossing down here. And I don't keep too much in it, just the planner itself. I got a pencil board from Hobonichi. I don't know what this cover is called, but it's a cat. It's a cat with a teddy bear and a rabbit. Um, yeah, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I mean, there's really not much to see because 2024 has just started, but I got a whole bunch of red stars there. So we are happy. We are good to go. That is my planner. And that's what, but this and my five-year journal is what I use every single day. Uh, or I should be using every single day. So these I would say are the most familiar and the ones that you probably end up seeing a lot, which is funny because I wouldn't classify either of these as like a standard art journal. This five year is a bit more of an art journal, but both of these are very practical uh, kind of, you know, life planning and life documenting type things. There's a lot of writing that goes into all of this that is less focused on being artistic. Uh, it's still expressive uh, and organized, but it's an interesting thing because I, when I think about what I do daily, I think about painting and drawing and coloring ins and, you know, all that stuff. But realistically, I think my, my daily journal practice is a little bit more focused on, uh, you know, revisiting my life as it is planned out and as it is experienced. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> Makes it sound so much... Oh, I was going to say, I have a cough. <coughs> there you go. There was an example. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this video... 
as brief as I can. <laughs> but if you hear me coughing, I'm not editing it out because it's just got to be chill. We have to be chill and we have to enjoy ourselves. So I'm going to stop getting so philosophical about journals. I might not be able to help it though. This is my new one in here. She's so tiny. She still fits in the box. Love her to death. But I'm still working on this one. My most favorite chunky beast of all time. It's so exciting to have one almost fully complete. All of the left-hand side passages are complete. Like all of that is done. I'm just going through and finishing up some of the right-hand side pages. Can you see there's some little empty spaces? I wanna make sure it's all fully, fully finished. So I'm keeping my cover on that for now and I'm working very diligently to get that finished. I usually always store it in the box that the cover came in because it's original box here, the little yellow one, uh, it just doesn't fit in there anymore. I used to put these stickers on it like it was a little travel suitcase and you know, it just, it grew out of that very, very quickly. So then I got a Mina Peronen cover for my uh, A5 journals over there. This is the stuff that it came with originally, kept all that. Oh, I got a sticker. Um, but then I covered the box with stickers and patches like I did with its original yellow box. So this was the Hobonichi Techo's cover box, but even that it doesn't fit into anymore. And this was another cover. So boxes inside boxes, if you ever wonder what all of that is about. But I keep it in there because it, it floats around all the time and I just like it to be safe. I've got a pencil board for that as well, which is nice. And I don't think we need to go any further with that because you'll be seeing a lot more of that uh, at the start of this year anyway. So that's more daily stuff. Oh, uh, I guess we should, I mean, we're gonna revisit everything that you've ever seen in your whole life on this channel. But I wanted to talk about this because this is kind of retired, not, not really. Like it's not a rule that I may never touch this again, but these are my photo journals. And I really, really love these. And I, I was just looking through them before I started. And then I was like, actually, I'm gonna unretire that. <laughs> I just don't know how practical it is to keep up with these photo journals. They're super simple, but um, I mean, as with everything, it still takes time that I don't always have. So I've got four of them. Uh, a few of them are like kind of complete. There's just a little bit of space here and there that I could probably finish up, you know, within a couple of days if I really put my mind to it, but I don't. And then, uh, you know, these are a little bit more chaotic, <laughs> these ones. <laughs> these were just traveler's notebook inserts that I wanted to fill with photos that uh, I, that could breathe a little bit because all the photos I put in my Hobonichi ten, uh, five year are really small. And the other ones that I would print out for random places tended to be too small. So I just wanted to make sure that I had a lot of space and uh, I dedicated these particular journals to that. And photography, my husband's a photographer. So I just felt like it was important to have something dedicated to photos. And I really, really love these. And I probably, I'm not gonna say I'm retiring them actually. I'm gonna keep them close by. I just don't really do this that often because now I put everything in my jumbo journals. Last week on my channel, I did make a tutorial on how to make this, which is my newest one. This is a jumbo journal made out of Trader Joe's paper bags. It is essentially a large format, very slim page count junk journal uh, of craft paper that has half print on it. So this is something that I use to put all of the stuff that doesn't have a home uh, into a home because it's not hoarding if it ends up where? In a journal. Um, this is one of the pick boxes that I was talking about that I didn't show in that video, but I put all of the stuff as it collects in here. So empty sticker pages, prints, like random prints, things like this, originals that don't have a home, excuse me. <coughs> I just need to make sure that they do end up somewhere. I used to put them all in other tubs and things and then I would never address the tubs. So I would just collect and collect and collect and collect. And I always felt... You would not believe it. The camera just dropped out of the air. So I don't know where I got up to. I was just saying, I have these pick boxes. Everything would collect and it would never end up in a home. So now as soon as it gets full, I dump it all out into the jumbo journals and that's just where they live. I did flip through in last week's video, the tutorial on how to make it. Uh, all three of them, I believe, but I'll just give you a quick look at what one looks like when it's all kind of full of lovely stuff. 
very big format so you can put a lot of huge stuff in here and I really really love these they're so impractical to travel with and it always pains me to think of how I'm gonna get these back to Australia one day I'm gonna have to uh, like hire a shipping freight container or something I'm sure just for my journals alone but I love the huge format and you can see the photos uh, that I print bigger now get to live in this much bigger format so that's kind of why I say the photo journals are retired um, but they're not. I'm, I'm changing my mind on that too. So just let me be a nightmare, please. <laughs> um, I put a lot of my originals in here as well. Everything goes in here, literally everything. Not even just random journal stuff, but like household items. If I can fit it in there and if it glues in or sticks in, it's going in. So that's that. Those I'd say are pretty constant. Uh, you know, the planner is every day, the Hobonichi uh, five years every day. It is a tet shell, but I just call it my five year. And then the jumbo journal is pretty often as well. The other things that kind of hang around, these are all just gonna be random things, but something I figured I'd show you really quickly first are almost finished journals. And a lot of them are travel or workshop related. So in here, <laughs> I've done a whole series on YouTube on this one and I got almost right to the end and I just haven't finished it which is so like me. Um, this is Paris and London, 2022. And I'm irritated that I didn't finish it by 2023, but it is what it is, Santa. This one is finished. The first one, uh, there's like a teeny tiny little bit of space that I've got to put a few little notes. Um, but this actual first part of the journal is finished and it is so chock-a-block full and wonderful. Every single episode is on YouTube. It's all in a playlist as well. So if you want to see all that come to life, there's some really fun stuff in there. Um, but I also had this... Uh, book that I traveled with that I did some of my uh, sketching in Paris like I did this while we were on the trip and so I wanted to put this to go with it but it wasn't full either so I was just working on finishing up some of this and putting some extra bits and pieces in here so there's just a couple of pages I feel like I could address and then it would be fully finished and I'd be ready to flip it so that is my Paris and London that is unfinished <coughs> it lives inside that leather cover and then this is my other leather cover that has unfinished Australia journals in it and I think these are from multiple trips if I'm not mistaken I believe this was from when we went when my sister got married so Steve was with me on this one and very unfinished I have changed my mind about what I wanted to do with this one I always thought I was going to come back print a bunch of photos and just finish it up um, I actually just think I'm going to use it for the next time I go and that my Australia ones don't have to be one trip equals one journal, uh, you know, like one in, well, one trip, one experience type thing. I think I'm just going to have it ongoing. Like I don't matter. It doesn't matter to me that these are at different times. So I will just add to this as we go. And there's still enough places to add some stuff. I don't do a ton of journaling on my holidays. So I think that will be fine. And I'll just use that for the next one. And these are actually Elijah's. This is Elijah's journal. He's got a lot of great stuff in here. This was from when, oh, there's my mum's handprint. I tell you, she does it everywhere. Look at Savannah's. <laughs> I guess I do have Elijah and Savannah's. I could have made those ornaments after all. Elijah loves stickers. He learned how to draw stars. Okay, I'm not doing flips, but I just wanted to show you uh, when, no, I swear this is from this one. This is from the most recent one as well. Oh, he worked on, see, this is why it doesn't matter. This was over both trips. This was, uh, when we went when Siobhan got married in 2022, but this is 2023. So I brought this back for him and he worked on it a second time. <coughs> Pardon me. He also has this one, which is full of uh, photos that he loves. So I'm going to bring this back. And you know, whenever I go back to Australia, I'm just going to bring these journals and we can keep working on these uh, over... However many years it takes us to get to the next one, I guess. So I'm going to be a little less strict about that one being finished. Uh, these are in process. And this is my beautiful cover with my charms. These two charms I've made. These one's from Playtest Patreon. And this one's from Virtual Voyage 6 Bento Box. I love the red Japanese post box one. It's my favorite. So those are journals that are unfinished. And it's not just those. The other ones I keep like this. Because it helps me keep it all together my Disney Cruise Line vacation. Now this one, I feel like I actually have to finish up. Everything's falling off the bed, I'm dying. 
Um, I'm going to have to finish this one up. It really frustrates me that I didn't. I've got lots of space to work on. I've got some photos I need to print out. And it's, it doesn't need to be a big deal, but I do need to commit to doing it. Oh, that was fun. I should scan that for Collage Club. Just random people I was drawing while I was at the pool deck. I've even got Collage Club printables for finishing this up. And there's not a ton of stuff that I need to address, but I just need to get it in there. So I put this in an old Art Snacks box because that's everything. I figured that whenever I pull it out, I'll address it all like this, put it all back in there. And it's kind of like a project box. And I have two more of these, believe it or not. I'm sure you can believe it because I'm always doing some kind of journal. This one doesn't have any extra bits, but I keep it in here because it's unfinished. This is Virtual Voyage 5. You know, ironically, the shorter Virtual Voyages are the ones that I don't tend to finish. So Virtual Voyage 5 uh, was the very villainous voyage where we were inspired by Disney villains. And there's just a lot in here. I mean, this is completely finished, this part, and I love this flip thing. That's from memory to memento as well. <coughs> Uh, but there are just lots of little gaps, little bits and pieces that I could address and make it look a little bit more complete. Don't know when that's going to happen. Probably around Halloween time if I feel like it or just a random time I feel like pulling it out. But that's another project box. These particular boxes are from the Bento box from Virtual Voyage 6, that Tokyo A Go Go cruise. And this is Virtual Voyage 7, Upon a Star. This is also very unfinished. Uh, this was that mini virtual voyage where I think it was, what, three or four days? And because it was just so quick, I really didn't get around to finishing a lot of it. And I love a lot of the work in here, but we just, it didn't go for long enough to even have a ton of work. So a lot of it is just repetitive or like my tests and my playing around. But I mean, I could address this and I could get to some degree of finish. Yeah, look, there's so, so much prep work that goes into all of it, but the actual lessons themselves was only a few days worth. So I do need to go and address this. I think one of the things I did, it's here, right? One of the things I did, oh yeah, instead of Neverland, it was never gonna finish land. And each of these were prompts to finish up the journal, but I think I was working my way through this, so. I'm gonna have to uh, to go do that. I even think these stars were from one of this, one of these prompts. Oh yeah, stars on stars on stars on stars on stars. So I started doing that. So this was a way to, it was kind of like a treasure map. And as you went through, it would tell you what to do. Um, I'm gonna use that to kind of finish up <coughs> the journal itself. And I have a few bits of ephemera that I can put in there. My Pinocchio marionette, this little butterfly from my costume. Lots of good stuff. I really like some of the work from this workshop. I'd probably like to revisit that, to be honest. Not as a workshop, but just, just for some inspo. So there's another project box. And as far as unfinished journals, that's it. Like those are the ones that I'm gonna to commit to finishing. Paris and London, Virtual Voyage 5, Virtual Voyage 7, and my Disney Cruise. Uh, Australia can be in flux, that's okay. Now, rando journals. This is all the rest, I think, is just kind of rando stuff. Uh, these are sticker books, the Traveler's Notebook insert size, and I use the backing from, uh, like, the sticker release paper from my collage club. <coughs> Pardon me. To make these journals, and then I just put all these sticker sheets in here. It's much easier to reference all my sticker sheets when they're in here, and... Uh, I'll stick the sticker sheet in if it's got a lot on it. Otherwise, I'll just peel the stickers and put them in here. Uh, but then I can travel with these as well. So I keep both of these sticker books kind of close. And I use these a lot for my Hobonichi five-year journal. And I'm not really looking to make any more, but I do have enough paper to make another one. I just don't want to encourage myself to have such a sticker problem that I would need to fill this many sticker books. <laughs> Although I do love stickers. I love them like that though, because it seems like a much more eclectic mix rather than just having sheets to rifle through all the time. That got a little old. The other set of rando journals I have, oh no, you know what? Before I get to that, I'll just show you what I'm talking about when I talk about Collage Club, because you'll probably see these in the corner of a video every now and again. These are my Collage Club folders, and this is the ephemera that I print out on sticker paper. 
matte photos or like matte glossy label paper or matte glossy, huh? Oxymoron. Matte paper or glossy paper, but they're all adhesive. And then I cut them out on my Silhouette Portrait 3. So essentially I'm left with stickers and I can use all of that however I please. But I got three of these going right now and in one of them, oh, here it is. See when I empty a page, like when it's all finished, I've just got nothing left. Uh, I'll take off, I'll weed the whole thing so I'm just left with the release paper, glue them back to back, fold them, staple them, and that's how I end up with the, the sticker books. Uh, it's just from all of this. So everything kind of gets recycled and I don't feel like I'm wasting a ton of paper because I print out at least five of these sheets every month and we've been going, this is our fourth year in Collage Club, so you can uh, do the quick math there. It's a lot of printing and a lot of label paper that I use. But I love it, I love Collage Club so much and sometimes I get so upset because I use so much of it and then I want to reuse other parts of my favorite ones. It's all a mess right now because I'm in my five year, but that's that. So you know what I'm referring to. And then I guess since we're talking about workshops, we could, we did talk about a workshop. Ah, oh, I'm so sick of everything falling. Just put that there. This is a Hobonichi Cousin that I use for Virtual Voyage. I actually use it for all my workshops and lessons that I teach. And I plan my lessons out, do my little sketches and ideas. I come back to this all the time when I'm thinking about new workshops. I've got ideas for other things that I never used, so I'll use that idea from a year ago and, you know, reinterpret it or use it again. Daisy style workshop. These were the notes for that. Lots of development of ideas in here. I mean, sometimes I'll do some random sketches, but for the most part, I like color maps, color layouts for things. I am planning workshops in here. So this is a really fun one to look through because it's a lot of ideas and thinking and I don't really, I'm not too precious with it. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh my goodness, that took so long. <laughs> if you only knew how long this stupid pixel grid art took. This is a Tamagotchi. Uh, that was for Virtual Voyage 6. Tokyo A Go Go. So I use this to do all of that and I think we're almost at the end. Oh yeah, I am at the end. You are joking. I have nothing left in here. I'm gonna have to get a new one. This was actually given to me by someone who wasn't using it anymore. So I don't have another one of these particular journals. I'm gonna have to choose one. Funnily enough, I did actually pull this out from my drawer and it's barely used, but it's a Midori A5. Uh, it's one of the 10 year anniversary special notebooks. I don't think it's gonna be a good substitute, but I'll keep my eye out. Anyway, that is what I use for my workshops. And this is a Sojourner cover. I think it's a Traveler. I'm not quite sure what this one was called, but I've got all my patches on it. I do have another one of these uh, Hobonichi Cousins in this Chic Sparrow beautiful red leather cover. But this one is kind of full of random junk as well. This was kind of my ideas book before I had uh, this one specifically for workshops. And this is kind of a junk journal of sorts as well. Random stuff that never had a home would go in here. This was uh, when I was planning my first virtual voyage. All of my ideas for how it would all lay out. This is so nostalgic to look back on. Oh, stamp and illustration stuff. Yeah, I'd collect a lot of random stuff in here, a lot of samples. A lot of ideas. Oh, these are the original sketches from one of my uh, stamp sets. These are all the other options we could have had. <laughs> it's funny to see those. But this one isn't finished, it's just very chunky, but I still have some uh, wiggle room at the back here. So I'll be using this until that kind of fills up, but it's for random stuff, I really don't. I have a whole bunch of journals that I just use for random stuff, so I guess I'll get those out. This one, I'm actually quite sad to realize that's finished. It's like a bittersweet feeling. I love feeling like I've accomplished, you know, completing a journal, but this one in particular, I could have, like it's not even that chunky that I wouldn't keep using it. I'm gonna miss that one. So many good memories in there. Uh, the other random journals, these are both Mina Perrin and Peace covers, and these are A6 Hobonichi Techo. Uh, Avex. So these are the half year ones. This is what I used to do my planners in and these aren't finished per se. I mean this one is kind of full. 
Sometimes I keep them around just because I like to flip through them. I know it's stupid, but I just do. I do my page in tens in here. Haven't done one of those in a long time, but that this is where I do those. Uh, this one still has some pages in it that I can use. Here. See all these empty pages? Like the other day I was planning something that I needed to write a whole bunch of dates down for. So I just used it for this. Uh, and that's what I mean by like just a random journal. These sit in my drawer and if I just need to get a piece of paper to figure something out on, I'll grab one of these and just, you know, scratch away in it. So these are old planners, but I still use them for the paper that they have available. And then as far as random uh, notebooks and planners and stuff go, like this is another random traveler's notebook that I used to love drawing in, that I will continue to love drawing in. I just draw random stuff in here. So I keep that around. This is another one of the Hobonichi Techo Avex. I did my Daisy Ween book in here. So this actually was one, I think this is the one that I had when I decided to switch to the weeks because I needed the monthly and the yearly view. And so all of these daily pages are still available. So again, this is one that I will just grab if I need to scratch something out. And this was an old Midori paper cover that I just found, or MD paper cover. So I just use that for its cover. Like I said, the MD, 10th, uh, MD notebook 10th anniversary I've barely done anything in here, so I'll just use this if I need some more blank cream paper. An old pocket notebook. This one hasn't been out in so long, but I'm going to keep it out and see what happens. There's some random collages that are half started. I feel very creative when I flip open this book and just start playing in it, so I'll just see what happens. So just a pocket uh, moleskin, actually. I rarely use those, but... I really, really loved working in this. I think a lot of this I did in Playtest Patreon years ago. So if you've signed up over Christmas with that coupon, you should be able to find a lot of this in Playtest Patreon 2, I think. And that's a Sojourner cover uh, that we uh, gave out at, well, I should say we, Rowena gave it out. Um, but I had signed it at our meetup that we did together a long time ago now. That's so long ago. It's reversible too. Um, I think I'm going to put some... I don't know, I think I want to do something to this cover. I always felt bad for signing them all because I just felt like that wasn't a nice signature. But it's half a memory as well, so I don't know. Cute little cover though. This isn't a random random one, like I wouldn't pick this up just to scribble in it. Uh, but it is a B6 Slim size Midori. And I use it on every other page. This is a stream of consciousness journal. So if you remember me talking about my stream of consciousness journaling, this is that. And this is where I do a lot of that. I've got another journal over there that I'll show you some uh, where that started. But it, this is just a cute little version of that that I felt like would be more portable since I wanted to do this anywhere and everywhere. So I'm going to get more into this, I think. Uh, ironically, I used to do this a lot when I was a little bit more sad. Now that I find myself a lot happier, uh, I don't feel the desire to do it as much. I'm curious to do it, but I actually used to really just want to get in here and it was almost a very creative, cathartic kind of heart purge moment uh, to do that. So very interesting, but we'll dive into that another time. Some rando uh, like handmade inserts with watercolor paper. Sometimes I just want to do some really nice drawings that need some nice watercolor paper. And so I will use stuff like this. These are really, really tiny ones. I don't know why I made them this sp specific size. They were probably off cuts of paper that I had, but I have a lot of these just random inserts, uh, what do we call them? Signatures? And I used to do a lot of live streaming uh, with this type of stuff, just because it was all purpose. When you've got watercolor paper, you can do anything with it. So that felt like the right choice for that, but this is pretty random. And this was from Art Snacks recently. So this was in the drawer as well. And I'll keep it there for the same reason, just if I need a really nice little bit of paper to work on. Let me check that I'm still recording because I had a mishap last week where I press record, but I actually press stop. So now I'm paranoid. <laughs> <coughs> oh goodness, I can't laugh without coughing. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. Make some space for this. There's a third one of these. Oh, there it is, it went flying. Here are my Moomin little journals. These are just big grid notebooks. They've got a smaller grid inside of a bigger grid, but I use them most, mostly for the big grid. And I do a lot of my workshop stuff in here as well. A lot of this retro kawaii illustration and these rally stamps that I actually had made 
for my meetups. I really, really love these. They're just super handy to have. I love a gridded notebook. I really loved all of this uh, that we did in Virtual Voyage 6, all of the Disney Parade float drawings. Grids are just perfect for all of that. So I also find that when I'm teaching, sometimes it is really helpful to teach with a grid. I don't want people to think they have to be so mathematically you know, inclined to be able to illustrate, but sometimes, especially with symmetry or for things that I want to talk about re-proportion, I think it's really good to be able to to get a visual on the geometry. It makes it sound really important, it's not at all, but you know what I'm talking about. It just helps to reference sometimes. And to replicate. You can always go square for square, that old grid technique. This one I believe is finished. I don't think there's anything else left in here. Oh wow, I remember working on this, I loved this. Why did I stop? Probably just forgot I did it at all. <laughs> I should bring that back. I really loved this. I was working with all these uh, really geometric shapes to create a Peter Pan scene for the ride. So I had the Little Mermaids down here. I had uh, Big Ben, the ship, Captain Hook, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, Skull Rock. Even the waves I tried to make with geometric patterns. Yeah, it was like illustrating with shapes. Uh, just the blocky shapes and not getting too too much further than a simple, a simple shape. <coughs> I really like that. Should go back to that. So I've got this one is uh, finished and then I have started another one. These are Disney uh, like ride vehicles and Alice in Wonderland. I did this from my workshop, the Daisy Style workshop. This is actually a sticker I had made. This goes in my Etsy orders. It's a vinyl sticker. It's exactly where that came from. I still love to hand draw everything. Even the stuff that I do on Procreate, it's typically, I'd probably say always hand drawn and I'll scan it in and I'll do it on top of that. And sometimes I just still love the hand drawn stuff better. But I can appreciate the more digital versions. This one is empty and will be what I need whenever I'm finished this one. So that is the little Moomin gridded notebooks that I use. This is a deco journal. This one is finished. This one was from when I went to Australia. I don't believe I've flipped this yet, so I will flip it at some point and let you see all of the wonderful things in here and all my family's hands. But the deco journals, I've used one of these before in my Virtual Voyage workshop, Virtual Voyage 8, where we did uh, Back to Burtonville. And that one was a black and white one that's available on Amazon. These are pre-decorated books that I just kind of stick everything into. So I wouldn't work directly into them other, unless I was writing on it with a pen uh, or a marker or something, but it's great to just put all my collaged bits and pieces on. And since this was a travel journal and it was for my family, or like for my family holiday, all of the background pages had pictures from my family on it. So my mum actually kept it as a photo book, <laughs> <coughs> which of course she did and I knew she would, but I used mine as a travel journal and it's just beautiful. I love seeing all my family on the background pages, and this is a lot of photos for my trip, so I'll flip that when I need to flip it. There's vlogs about all of that from last year, at the end of last year. Oh, I don't think we have much left to go. We have this, and this is probably what I'm most excited about, so of course I saved it. No, I will save it for last, actually, because I've got one more I want to show you before I get to that. This is huge. This is a uh, this is a Moleskine A3. And this is a lot of the stuff that I do for art snacks. It just gets popped in this pocket for some reason. I just started doing it and I never stopped. This is a this is an A3 size, and this is a Chic Sparrow uh, A3 cover. And this was gifted to me. They don't actually make these. I think it was a sample of something that. Uh, they were thinking about producing, but decided not to just because of the unbelievable cost of making it and then selling it. Uh, so I was very lucky to be gifted this and it is just so gorgeous. I did accidentally spill ink on it the other day. Uh, here, you can just kind of see a little stain there. <coughs> I don't mind. I think I want it to be all beaten up and used and, you know, weathered over time. I've had this for years and it's still really, really lovely, um, but humongous A3 le leather cover. And it came with the uh, notebook as well. 
And I used to do like random illustrations in here. This is a Stampin' Illustration thing that I half finished because I'm lazy. Some moons. A bit of collage. I did love to get rid of all my uh, bits and pieces. See, when I used to not do my junk, junk journaling like that, all my bits and pieces would end up in the backgrounds of collages. Because I was like, well, there's no other way to use them and I need to use all of this stuff. So there's a lot of collage in here. This was some sketching with a fountain pen and I would use water to activate the faces. I should get some of these faces into Collage Club as well. Oh, look at the little Daisy Ween sketches. Just because this is such a big format, <coughs> I've put a lot of original random stuff in here as well, but there's no rhyme or reason to this. It doesn't have to be anything specific and a lot of the time it's just nothing too important. I did a lot of stamp samples, some samples from when we went to Creativation because I took this big journal. So I wanted people to see uh, how I was using the stamps that I was creating. Since a lot of the stamps that I make aren't fully finished, they're like bases for things. So it's, it's mostly so you can stamp them out lightly and illustrate over the top. And it's a, like a, a drawing tool rather than a finished stamp set. But then I was doing a lot of uh, like ideation in here as well. This was a Beetlejuice sketch flicks that I was doing and coming up with ideas for my first virtual voyage that we did inspired by Tim Burton. So a lot of the ideas came from just playing around in here, like the Fonsters. That's where those came from. I'm sure there's other ones in here. Oh yeah, the Nightmare Before. Uh, we called the lesson the Nightmare Before Insert Holiday here, but this is when it was the Nightmare Before Easter. This is the Nightmare Before Valentine's Day. Uh, and then the door, in case of an emergency, open a door. So it would I would just put my little notes in here and then they actually became lessons. So a lot of the time I love looking back at this because, you know, it, it went somewhere and then I've eventually like done it and then I've seen other people's versions of it and then it's years have passed and it just becomes completely nostalgic. So even if I feel like it's just lots of scribbles at the time and it doesn't really mean much, you never know. You never know what's gonna happen. This is when I was in that phase. Remember I was in that housewife phase? I was in my Stepford Wives phase. I love that phase. I might go back. These were some random monster stuff that I was working on uh, for a virtual voyage. I was trying to understand this lesson that I had. Well, not a lesson, but it was a, a YouTube video I watched of a guy talking about how he would create these monsters and he would start with the silhouettes. So I was uh, practicing with that. Some more stamp samples. This was working on some uh, classwork or some ideas for teaching at the Wizarding Artist Society, which is all sunset now. All of my Wizarding Artist Society stuff you're probably not going to see much of anymore because that's all finished over at Art Journaling the Magic. So that was a lovely season of a few years. This was some of that work. <coughs> Merry Mix Media from last year. This is the most recent one. I was doing my little, my little bits and pieces in here. <coughs> Pardon me. Ooh, I am. I've got to start wrapping this up because I don't know how much longer I'm going to make it out. But this was really cute. Oh look, one of the lessons was going to be <laughs> Whoville Fashion Week. We might put that off to another year. We'll see when that happens. All right. And last of all, let me grab it over here. We have these two what I would consider kind of my more traditional art journals. Like when I think about when I started art journaling, this is what it was kind of all about for me. And I think probably why, uh, you know, as soon as this was done, I pulled this one out immediately. And it's been really, really nice to kind of uh, work in this now, thinking back on like how far I've come uh, in, in my ideas about art journaling. And I'm, I'm just feeling like, you know, that cycle is just kind of starting again. So basically I was doing lots of random fun play stuff in here. I did my 100 day challenge in here through 2023, all of the stamp and illustration pieces. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. We'll get there, promise. Uh, I did a lot of testing of random things in here. This was the, uh, what do you call it? Intuitive? Is that what I was calling it? 
stream of consciousness, goodness me, uh, this is the stream of consciousness journaling. It is intuitive, the way you do it. Um, and this is where it really started. I think this was the first spread that I did. And I had just done a bunch of these in here and I really, really loved it. Uh, it was super fun, kind of cathartic and uh, therapeutic. But I was just doing a lot of random stuff in here. It was kind of like a sketchbook, art journal. It just felt nice to have this is the most true consciousness. This, um, this hardbound cover and this beautiful sketch paper just kind of threw me back to the, you know, the beginning of what I was doing and when I used to work in these journals like this, where it was mostly just being creative and, you know, I didn't really think about doing anything. Well, I guess I did. I used to think about doing it from start to finish and <laughs> finishing every page before I moved on to the next one. So my ideas are kind of all over the place in this one, but... Um, I went back through it on the 100 day challenge to kind of finish uh, or like finish a lot of the gaps and make sure that it wasn't there wasn't too many pages with a lot of dead negative space on it. But there was a lot of stream of consciousness in here that I just really loved. It felt very freeing to just scribble all over the page and do random things, you know, chuck my stamps at it, put water everywhere, get a huge paint pen out and just scribble. I loved all of that. So... Uh, when this journal was full and the 100 day challenge was really kind of what filled it all up, I decided that I needed another journal to keep going with. And so I grabbed, <coughs> pardon me, a journal that's kind of almost the same size. This is A4. This is 8.5 by 11. So this is the difference between a US letter size and an Australian like standard size A4. This is the one that I got from the Riot Arts and Crafts that was on a massive sale. Don't know where you can get these. I'm so sorry, but if you ever find this in the, uh, what's it called? Drawing paper? It's like a very beautiful cardstock type uh, hardcover journal. And I love this. I've been using it kind of like a sketchbook art, well, it's an art journal. Originally I was just drawing in it and I was like, oh, this is kind of a sketchbook and I'll just use it for drawings. But then I started thinking, why couldn't this be an art journal? Like, why couldn't I just put all of my other scrapbooky type things in here? Why can't I put my photos in here? Why can't I put some of my ephemera in here? And I thought, oh, I absolutely can. And then very, very quickly, once I had started doing that, I felt like this is the direction that I would love my art journals to kind of go, where a lot of it can be very creative and, and very finished, but a lot of it can still be very experimental and, you know, very loose and freeing. Like, this is a very fully finished spread with very specific ideas about why I was doing it, but this is just random. Some swatching that lives next to, you know, a, a really nice sketch that I tried to do a good job at with some ephemera. This is what I'm really, really loving right now, so... This feels very nice to me, and I feel like I will be pulling this out a lot. I don't really want to say this is why, like, the, from my big jumbo journals, now I'm turning to this and it's going to be this. I think they, the jumbo journal still exists for a lot of the junkier stuff, and maybe that's the wrong way to think about it. I don't know. I'll let you know when I go through it, but just for some of the more important, quote-unquote, ephemera, <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. I just think maybe if there's, like, a nicer... If there's a nicer bit of ephemera that I want to put in here, I'll, I'll put it in. Something flatter, something that fits, you know, if I've got something that randomly fits there, I'll just put it in there. Um, I don't have to fill every single part of every single page. I'm going to let some of the illustrations just breathe where they are, like here. I don't really need to put anything else on there, it's fine. I don't need to fill it with illustrations where there is some, you know, blank space. I'm just really loving how this looks. Whatever this is, whatever this makes sense as in your brain, uh, to call it, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> and I mostly started doing this uh, towards the end of last year when I needed to do my Christmas spread. Because, and maybe this is what I mean by like more important ephemera, I collect all of the stamps and the address, like the two James and Steve part of all of our envelopes we get from Christmas cards. And I did it in my jumbo journal the year before and it looked really great, but I didn't have a full spread available in the one I was currently working on at the time. So I decided to do it in this journal instead. And then I thought, oh great, well I'll put my, put my stickers in there as well. I'll put my photos in there. And that's when I thought, oh, okay, this is what I'm enjoying. I should just keep doing this. So you can see all my Christmas stuff here. This is where that all started. So thank you, my 
tradition of collecting all of these Santa mail for making me do that because now I have discovered that this is how I want to be art journaling for the time being. And I think it's great because this actually A4 is big enough to keep some of these photos be really nice and big. I still get this beautiful paper to work on uh, that, you know, takes a whole bunch of mediums and I can put my photos in here and there's still enough space to put, you know, my ephemera wherever I need to put it. And I can tip stuff in. It's going to get a little chunky. I always end up breaking the spine on this. You can see this one's already kind of broken. I broke the other one as well. It's not new, um, but I just love it. They still hold up even when they're broken. So this is something hopefully you'll see a lot more of. Just kind of does everything. I can put my, f I can put everything in there. Except my planning. I wouldn't put my planning in there, but that's why I've got a planner. So, I believe that's everything. I've exhausted myself talking about it all. Oh, I've got one more. Such a liar. So random, but I take this into Disneyland with me. It's a pocket-sized journal, and I just do little doodles. So much easier to take this in and just sketch away when I'm walking through Disneyland. But when I'm not doing the sketches in it, I also use it for my Purikura passport, which is sticky pics. And this is actually also one of my favorites. <laughs> I love sticky pics. I need to go to Japan. I need more. I've run out. I need to fill this entire journal. I mean, I could have. If I've always, if I kept one of every sticky pics I've ever done, I could have filled 10 of these journals. But I only really started doing this. I did this in Virtual Voyage 6. And I think the earliest sticky pics I have from this are 2017. So only a few trips to Japan in there where Stella and I went, Steve and I went, and, oh, this one was in Sydney. This one I used to do them in high school. My mum and my stepdad went before a show. <coughs> Pardon me. That's my sign. That's my cue. I gotta go. Thank you so much for sharing time with me and looking through all of my lovely journals that I think you'll be seeing in and around my JLB Creative Spaces. I'm usually here every Friday. Uh, I'm not got any plans to change that on YouTube, but if I do, I'll let you know. And you can always catch me over on Instagram as well. I love to share over there. We have a Facebook group. I'm not super active in the Facebook group, but it is a great place to ask questions and uh, share your work if you like to share in a more closed private space. And where else can you find me? TikTok. I've not been doing anything on TikTok except wasting my day. But I might start up again there. I don't know. I don't really know about TikTok. I've got so annoyed ever since they start selling things. I don't want to be on there as often. But I did like my TikToks. If I ever hear uh, funny sounds, I'll, I'll try and make some TikToks over there just for fun. But I think you can always catch me uh, at least once a week on YouTube. And then everywhere else, find me on Instagram, James Luke Burke Creative. And I will see you throughout the year with these lovely journals. Wish me luck on finishing this five year. This is my next big project is to finish this so I can get this all lovely filmed for you and you can look through one of my life's greatest accomplishments. I'm so excited to get that done. Until then, have a great weekend. Have a great start to your 2024. I'll see you soon. Bye. Just enjoy the ride.